we can start. Uh, well, and that is the case. Um, I will welcome everyone. So, um, dear participants, welcome everybody today um, for this wonderful uh, side event. The side event that we're uh, currently um, uh, currently joined by uh, are joining today is the following. It's the youth-led activism for women, peace, and security, looking for a paradigm shift. This event is organized under the WPS series, Key Voices for Lasting Change, Shaping the WPS, uh, WPS Agenda for the Coming 10 Years. Uh, this side event is organized by Cordate, Civil Society Platform for State Building, and oh, one sec, perfect, yeah, um, and uh, UNOY Peace Builders. Um, well, as you can see today, we have a couple of object, object, objectives of this session. We would like to raise awareness of what UNSCR 1325 means for young peace activists and how the YPS and WPS agenda are interlinked. Uh, we're going to discuss the opportunities and challenges that young people face in promoting gender equality and applying a strong intersectional gender lens in working on youth, peace and security with best practices from numerous of countries such as Iraq, Yemen, Libya and Afghanistan. Uh, these uh, best practices will come from youth that, from the youth themselves, from activists themselves, they'll uh, be introduced shortly. Um, and furthermore, we're going to provide, uh, they will provide us with recommendations for policy decisions and for policymakers on how to support young people's actions in working on the interlinkage in promoting gender equality and accelerating the women, peace and security agenda. Um, well, my name is Mert Kumu. I'm the UN Youth Representatives of the Netherlands. Um, I'll be your host today. So if there's anything that you want to tell me, want to let me know, please feel free to contact me at any given point. Uh, some couple of house rules uh, before we start off. Um, when you're not speaking, please make sure that your uh, mic is muted, uh, the camera is off, and uh, there is a possibility to send in questions through the Q&A box uh, in the chat, so just type it away. Um, please make sure that your name is written out fully uh, and the name of the organization you represent in uh, the, the, the little renaming tool. And if you would like to tweet live uh, with regards to this event, you could use the following. You, uh, you could use the following hashtag. Uh, this is hashtag Key Voices WPS and or hashtag WPS2020. They're visible on the screen as of now. Um, for your information, this session will be recorded. So please uh, put on your best smiles and uh, let's have a wonderful side event. Afterwards, this um, recorded event will also be uploaded so you can always watch it back and um, send it out for your own network. Okay, so those are the uh, house, house rules before we start. I will uh, briefly introduce uh, the speakers in um, the following tentative order. So, um, we have four wonderful guest speakers and uh, we're very glad that even due to um, the tough COVID-19 a pandemic we're able to host this event so thank you all for being here in, uh, in the masses um, and let's make the best out of it okay so i would like to briefly introduce uh, the first speaker this is uh, sofia ramyar sofia is from afghanistan and she's the former executive director of afghans for progressive thinking or apt which is the largest professional youth-led organization in afghanistan apt is also a partner organization for, from unoy and cspps Sophia has been working on youth peace and security for a very long time and made a great contribution to the lobby for the groundbreaking resolution 2250 on youth peace and security, which was adopted by the UN Security Council in 2015. Uh, last year, Sophia has spoken at the, at the UN Security Council about this resolution and about the important role of youth in promoting peace and just and inclusive societies. In addition to this, Sophia has also initiated the annual Afghan Youth Representative to the UN program, which provides unique opportunities to the Afghan youth to serve as a representative for the younger generation, to advocate their rights and to communicate their voices to the international commu community. Um, fun story, that colleague, that, will, that person will probably be a colleague of mine, uh, and I'm looking very forward to meet him or her in the future. And now we'll go to the second speaker, or I'll introduce the second speaker. Um, this will be, if I hope that the, oh, the light is, I'm sorry for the lights, guys. <laughs> um, it's because of, I guess, 
Okay, that doesn't matter. Um, I'll introduce the second speaker. This is Feryal Majidi, I hope I pronounced it correctly, from Yemen. Um, she's a project coordinator for peacebuilding projects at the Youth Without Borders Organization for Development in Yemen. Uh, this is also a UNOI and CSPPS partner. Um, at the same time, she's also been an activist for peacebuilding and women's rights since 2015. And within this wonderful role, she has managed to uh, advocate for several campaigns related to UNSCR 1325 on women, peace, and security. Furthermore, uh, Friol has also worked as an exec executive manager for the Yemen Peace Corps organization, and she found several initiatives that, the, uh, that promote coexistence and community peace. Uh, Friol also works as a gender trainer and has her own podcast where she discusses topics related to women's rights and life development issues. Um, Friol, please send us the link for that podcast because I'm looking forward to listening to that later on. Um, the next speaker will be uh, Friyad Fuad Hama from Iraq. I hope we can see the next slide as well. I think so. Yeah. Um, and he's an activist from uh, Iraq uh, and he's working together with the Kurdistan, Kurdistan Relief Association, KRA, which is based in Kirkuk. In 2018, Friyad and the other young members are uh, Young, young members who are active with KRA joined the Cordate program, hashtag Youth Speak. This program brings together young people from Nineveh and uh, Kirkuk and Erbil to enhance safety and security in their local communities. Faryad is together with his colleagues uh, very involved in a community project that raises awareness on the issue of sexual harassment in Iraq. Through several activities, they targeted 5,000 community members from university students to local policymakers and also religious leaders. We're looking very forward for Faryad today that he's present. Uh, Faryad will be speaking in Arabic, so therefore um, the reason that we ask you to uh, turn on the translation is so that we can uh, understand Faryad um, to the fullest. So thank you very much for the understanding. Uh, and last but certainly not least, we have uh, the next speaker. Uh, and that speaker is Aisha Atubuli. Um, and she's a Libyan activist wor working on women's issues since she was 15 years old. She's a coordinator for the Together We Build It organization, which is a coordinate partner in the Dutch NAP 1325, founded by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Within her role as a coordinator at the Together We Build It organization, Aisha leads several projects related to the youth empowerment, youth peace and security, and women peace and security. She also works together with youth to empower them, but she definitely also recognizes, uh, organizes awareness raising campaigns on these specific topics. Aisha is also a member of the UN Women Youth Gender Innovative Agora, I'm sorry for my pronunciation, and she's currently studying political science with a specialization in international relationship at the American University in Cairo, Egypt. Okay. So these are the amazing speakers we're going to have today. It's a full program, but a very, very nice one. Uh, just to uh, give a short introduction, uh, to give a short recap um, for that, um, please make sure that because of the fact that Friyad will be speaking in Arabic, um, we, uh, the simultaneous translation needs to be turned on. So all non-Arabic speakers can select an audio channel to hear the translated audio in the English language. And I will, give it, I will give the instructions one more time. In the right lower corner of this Zoom meeting, you can find an icon of a little globe with underneath the word translation. Please click on it and select English audio afterwards. If, if you have done this, please continue to uh, click mute original audio and you're good to go. Um, well, I've talked more than enough, I suppose, and I would love to give the floor to my first speaker. And this first speaker will be um, Sophia Ramyar from Afghans for Progressive Thinking. Um, Sophia, I'll give you the floor. I hope Sophia is present. Thank you, Mert. Amazing. Sophia, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you so much for the introduction. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hello, good morning, everyone who are joining us uh, from around the globe. It's an honor for me to be part of this event. I would like to take the opportunity and thank Cordate Civil Society Platform for Peace Building and State Building, 
and United Network of Young Peace Builders for inviting me to speak on the important resolution on women, peace and security, which I believe is interlinked with the resolution on youth, peace and security. Please allow me to explain what I mean what I, when I say resolution 2250 and 1325 are both important and interlinked in the context of my work in Afghanistan. These two resolutions not only highlight the role of youth and women in Afghanistan over the past several years, but they have started bringing them into the position of influence. Stressing the importance of women, peace and security agenda today cannot be more timely when Afghan women as well as young people are concerned about an unknown outcome of a peace process that's underway. Women and youth need to fully participate in achieving and sustaining peace. Their active participation in the peace process that needs the support and backing of the international community will enable them to fight injustice, inequalities, and gender-based discrimination in Afghanistan. An international commitment to supporting this agenda would convey the message to Afghan women and Afghan youth that the international community stands with them and their voice and concern matters. This is a message that Afghan women and youth needs now. The investment of the international community on women and youth in Afghanistan have brought forth much result in the past 20 years that should not be overlooked. Young, young Afghans are now are an inspirational for the people of Afghanistan and at a time when they are so exhausted of a war that's taking toll on our nation. The war needs to end now and the hope for peace is exactly these two segments of the Afghan society we are talking about today. They form by large the absolute majority of population, unfortunately, their rights and gains are threatened the most during the ongoing peace process. In the fact of threats from terrorism and political instability, Afghan youth and women gives us a story of inspiration. Among approximately 200,000 youth who participated in the annually university entrance exam this year, a young woman, Shamsia, achieved the highest score. In an interview with BBC, she said that she wants to become a doctor. Afghanistan hope is in its shamshias. Young women and men who will stitch the, world, the wounds of our country and help us heal. This segment of society needs your support today. Let me be clear on this. We need international support now, not a promise for the future. The peace process will not succeed if we fail to integrate women's perspectives in the negotiation from the start. We should not ignore or postpone this conversation to a later stage. Letter never arrives. The time is now. Ladies and gentlemen, we, Afghan women and youth, are working hard. The organization I led, Afghans for Progressive Thinking in Afghanistan, is a concrete example of such a hard work. We provide books and school for thousands of children who are internally displaced due to ongoing conflict. These wonderful children are getting an education that they, that they deserve as a result of young leadership. APT runs a regressive program process to select the annual Avon Youth Representative to the United Nations. This program embodies both UN Security Council Resolution 1325 and Resolution 2250. For the past two co consecutive years, young women become finalists that inspired millions of young across Afghanistan. APT organized debate tournaments on campuses to scrutinize public policies and recommend alternative solutions. Efforts like APT and people like Shamsias Alizada need to be protected and supported for Afghanistan to become a peaceful country. I will conclude by sharing a few humble recommendations. First, UN officials should, grow, should never grow tired of discussing 1325 and 2250 in every meetings they have with Afghan leaders and international influencers. 
Second, UN and member states should put out regular public statement in support of Afghan women and youth in during the peace negotiation and after a potential peace deal. Third, and final, my recommendation, active and established organization like Afghans for Progressive Thinking should be supported and strengthened to carry on their mandate. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sophia. Um, thank you for this wonderful, um, wonderful insight you gave um, with regards to the work that you do. Thank you very much. Um, we uh, have a couple of more minutes, obviously, for some questions and answers. Um, I have not seen any in the chat uh, as of now, but if someone has a question, please uh, let us know. Um, in the meantime, oh, my light has turned. <laughs> turned off again. I'm so sorry, people. I'll try to uh, fix that later on. But I do have a question for you, actually, Sophia. Um, am I audible, Sophia? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So uh, I, I found it very interesting that you said that um, international support is needed now with regards to a position of young women in uh, Afghanistan and uh, of women in general in Afghanistan. Um, I was wondering, um, how can um, we from for example, other member states, mostly in the Western countries, um, prevent a sort of um, uh, help that is a bit neo-colonial and just saying that you should do this in order to be good. How can we prevent that from happening and how can we more integrate the views of uh, local women um, in order to achieve these goals um, so that the goals can, uh, come forth out of a uh, natural idea of what is just and what should be done in Afghanistan. I hope that question is a little bit <laughs> logical. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Mir. This is a, this is a great question. Uh, I believe that uh, providing opportunity for you to speak up about themselves, that, that's one of the ways that the, uh, that the international community can support the youth, because uh, especially in Afghanistan, uh, uh, there are not a lot of opportunity for you to speak up and to uh, share their wife and purpose perspectives. I know there is a lot of events happening and the, at the uh, UN level and um, at other countries hosting uh, events on the peace process and about the uh, global security. So such events could be an, a great example that youth from Afghanistan should be invited and um, they should directly hear from Afghan youth. I know they there is a lot of representatives from Afghanistan who are governmental officials. They always travel and speak, but there are insufficient youth uh, representatives in such levels to speak for themselves. Thank you very much. We actually have some questions in the chat. Um, I would suggest that we start off with um, Anna Kvakenbosch. Anna, if you'd like to unmute yourself and please ask the question yourself, that would maybe be more interesting. Um, let's just write first. Yes, uh, <clears throat> Sophia, thank you so much for your presentation. I've been following you and your work already for a while, and it's extremely impressive, so thank you very much. Um, as you might know, as Cordaid and, and myself, we're working a lot on the peace process. And the struggles we have is that, uh, which is not just in Afghanistan the case, but in the case in many other countries as well, how can we really build those bridges between the younger generation that is coming in and women who've been for longer time active in this? How can we break down these patriarchal structures that are just as present in uh, women's groups um, as in other parts of society? Would you have any recommendations for that? Thank you so much and, and good luck. Thank you so much, Anna. So I would like to say that Cordit has played a huge role in Afghanistan, especially for Afghan women. And our organization was honored to to be partnering with Cordet in 2013-2014, and that was a great partnership. Regarding your question, uh, I believe that Cordet has already played a, a key role, but uh, their role can be more, uh, they, can, they can play more by uh, uh, 
working with the government or uh, uh, pressing on the Afghan government to uh, to have youth uh, included and women. So um, I appreciate the government's effort by including women's and, and youth's voices, but uh, I think that it's it's insufficient, especially the youth from uh, provinces. Uh, they, their voice should be included. Uh, it's mostly a youth in Kabul who get lots of opportunity, but sometimes uh, it, it helps to have representative from provinces on the ground to come and uh, talk about the reality and happening. Sometimes it's difficult to understand uh, if, if you're uh, if you're from a one one province. Uh, it's sometimes it's difficult to understand what's happening on another province. I think they called it can play a, a huge role by by um, gathering the voice of youth and women who who uh, who lives in 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 very far on or remote area. That's something that uh, I think uh, we are. Uh, uh, we have not yet so uh, successful in bringing those voices uh, included in the peace process. Okay, thank you so much. I will definitely look into that. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, indeed. Um, I've just heard from the organization, um, by the way, that I should uh, be reading out the questions in order to uh, moderate this debate better. But in uh, the end, there will be a Q&A where you can ask your questions yourself. Uh, but due to time constraints right now, I'll be picking out some questions. And we still have time for one more question in particular for you, Sophia. Uh, and this question um, was from uh, Anna Sparainska. I'm sorry, by the way, guys, if I pronounce the names entirely mis uh, incorrect. And she's from CRU uh, DFA Ireland. And her question was, uh, I would like, uh, um, thank you very much, Sophia, for your presentation. Would you know uh, what is currently the involvement of the youth and women in the peace negotiations? Are they invited to delegations? Do they get to participate at any level? And if not, what is missing and what can the international community do to help? So, Sophia. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th thank you for the question. Um, we, we have a women and youth representative in the negotiation uh, team on behalf of Avon government. Uh, it, it's very encouraging that we have women and, and youth, but um, uh, in my point of view, it's, it's insufficient because we have uh, only two youth representatives, but uh, youth from provinces, it's something that we are lacking. Uh, and women, we have a few women, but I believe that since women's uh, issue and human, women's rights is, is a very important topic in the peace negotiation. <laughs> عن حقوق المرأة الأفغانية وخاصة في هذه الظروف الصعبة وكان لدينا تجارب سابقة مع حركة طالبان ومع حكومة حكومة الأفغانية حيث في السابق لم يسمحوا للمرأة بأن تشارك في النشاطات العامة أو أن تذهب إلى المدرسة وتحصل على تعليم إذا مررنا بالتجارب صعبة وعصيبة لهذا نرغب بأن يقوم المجتمع الدولي بدعم النساء الأفغان ونقول بأننا مستعدين لدعم النساء الأفغان ودائما استخدام منظور المرأة في كافة النشاطات والمفاوضات وهذا من أجل تحقيق السلام المستدام شكراً على وقتك سيدة صوفية وسننتقل إلى الشخص التالي أو المتحدث التالي There will be time afterwards for a Q&A session so you can ask her your questions personally. Thank you very much, Sophia. Um, we'll now continue with our second speaker. Uh, this will be Feryal Majdi uh, from the Youth Without Borders Organization for Development from Yemen. So, uh, Feryal, if you... Uh, would like to turn on your webcam. You now have the floor. Thank you. Hi, all. Salam. Uh, it's uh, nice and uh, proud to be here to represent Yemen and uh, present uh, uh, Youth Without Border organization. Uh, of course, to make it uh, clear and uh, simple, uh, I make my presentation uh, question and answer presentation to make it uh, more clear. 
uh, first of all, um, I will talk about uh, who are we. Okay, the slides, please. Uh, youth Without Border Organization, who are we? Uh, youth Without Border Organization for Develop uh, Development, uh, YPOD, is a non governmental, non profit civil society organization uh, working on building the capacities of youth and empowering them to play significant and effective roles to bring about positive changes. It started its work at, as, a, as a, non uh, a non official youth initiative in uh, 2011. Then it was officially registered in uh, 5th April 2013 in the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs and Labor. Uh, the question also that I will uh, ask about um, uh, what are the efforts of the organization achieved in the uh, Women Peace Security Agenda and uh, Youth Peace Security Agenda? Uh, of course, there are a lot of projects that uh, the organization had uh, implemented. Uh, I will mention some, and you can go to the website of the organization to, to know more. Uh, one of the projects uh, uh, named Furthering the Youth Peace of Security Agenda in Yemen. It, uh, it uh, was uh, two consultative uh, meetings funded by UNFPA. Also, the project of Enhancing Community Peace Mechanism in Yemen. Uh, it aims to uh, empower local communities to address security and peace issues within local communities, and uh, it was funded by several work. Also, the project of Taz Life Melodies, which aims to enhancing peace and coexistence, and funded by GIZ. Okay. Uh, these are some photos and uh, as I mentioned you can go to the website to know more about the project of the uh, organization. Okay, uh, what has been accomplished according to 1325 in Yemen? Uh, recently the Ministry of Social and Labor with the cooperation and funding from the British EPIRT prepared a national plan in 1325 resolution. Uh, they um, they, uh, there, uh, there was a technical committee was formed to prepare this initial plan. A workshop was held and invited a number of organizations which were considered as approval to prepare the plan. Finally, the prime minister issued a decision to approve it. And that is so good recently. Uh, what has been also accomplished in 1325 in Yemen? UN Women has implemented a number of conferences and formed a Yemeni Women Pact as a consultative body for the Office of UN Envoy to implement this resolution in the ground, and they are uh, doing uh, a great job. Uh, also, uh, about 10 feminist alliance and the number of other civil society organization invest all possible activities, example training courses, advocacy campaign and many others in order to pressure the implementation of the resolution in the ground too. Uh, according to 2250 uh, resolution in Yemen, also many things has accomplished. Uh, for example, uh, there are projects to expand the knowledge and raise awareness of the resolution, which implemented by UNFPA. Uh, uh, they did uh, two phases and uh, the UN women uh, implemented the third phase. Also projects support the focusing of the importance of reopening the youth section in the Office of the Security General Special Envoy in Yemen through different activities like policy papers, advocacy campaign, and more, and that uh, implemented by uh, Save the Children. Uh, another project, uh, organization like uh, YPS, Yemen Peace School, for All Foundation, also that was in Sana'a, in Aden, uh, organization like uh, SOS, Center for Youth Capabilities Development, organization like uh, Afaq Shababia Foundation and like the Singles Council. And they are doing so great job. 
Uh, also, UN is seeking to establish a Yemeni Youth Pact for Peace and Security, which will represent a platform and adversary body that will work to implement this resolution in the ground. Okay, if we talk, uh, what is the um, uh, interlinked, how the 1325 and 2250 are interlinked? Uh, the good side that the two factions are political, uh, the bad side or the not good side that the two factions are politically marginalized uh, and the resolutions support their presence. Uh, but the good side that they both concern on the protection of girls and women and their participation in peace and security. Uh, if we talk about the parties of conflict in Yemen, how they deal, how these parties come in, uh, in Yemen deal with the, the two resolutions, um, they do not uh, deal with 1325 and 2250. Also, they do not accept. Uh, they do not accept the, the sitting of the youth or women in the negotiation table uh, because they think that this uh, it's military pretext. Uh, so uh, the Sana'a uh, uh, government uh, did not deal with the idea of a national plan and it is still. And after many long attempts, the legitimate government, as I mentioned, agreed. Uh, recommendations that we can talk for the decision makers uh, accelerate the preparation of uh, a national plan to implement the resolution. Also, uh, supporting youth and women to implement the outcomes of national dialogue, which stipulated that 20% of decision-making sites are dedicated for youth and 30% for women. Uh, also, recommendation that increase the support of youth and women participation in decision making and political and public life. Um, the last one, coordination and networking between the youth and women components to exit change of experience. As you know, uh, 1325 has 20 years experience. Thank you all and uh, I hope it's clear. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sid Yal. Thank you. Um, we You're have welcome. time for a couple of questions. Um, not too much, but we can do the following question from, uh, again, ex uh, excuse me for my pronunciation, uh, Samu Perlis Iwe Oga. Um, and he or she asks um, Peace is important for citizens' development and growth. How can we incorporate youth that is socialized by violence to peace building? Uh, and on, for example, South Africa is riddled by taxi conflicts and violence, which is impacting on both social and economic upwards mobility of the youth. So could you maybe answer that question? Is the sound okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, he taught, she, she asked that how the the youth, uh, of course we, you know here, um, the war uh, target youth as a, a number one youth. And uh, we are trying through 22 and 50 resolution to uh, target this, this youth people who go to the war to, uh, for another programs. Uh, we try to educate them, train them, and help them to come back from uh, the war fields to life fields through many programs. Okay, uh, thank you, Feryal. Um, we see that there the are still. Is not... oh. Can you hear yes. us? Yeah, can you hear us? Yes, no. yes, yes. Okay, uh, you, you were done with your answer, right? Yes. Okay, no, perfect. Um, but unfortunately, due to time constraints, we need to go to the uh, third speaker. So uh, questions that are uh, for Ferial can be um, can be saved for at the Q&A. So um, if someone wants to do, uh, like wants to ask a question later on, that is still possible. But now we need to continue to our okay. next 
uh, speaker. So thank you very all, uh, very much, uh, Friyal, for your uh, for your wonderful. Uh, um, thank you for this opportunity and uh, hope uh, I'm ready to answer the questions. And I think my presentation was uh, about question and answer. I hope to uh, that I answered many questions. Thank you okay. very much, Friyal. Okay. Um, before we continue to uh, our thank next. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Continuing to the next speaker, uh, Friyad, we would like to give uh, once more the explanation. Um, seeing that uh, Friyad will be speaking in Arabic, we have arranged a simultaneous translation for non-Arabic speakers. You can select an audio channel to hear the translated audio in the English language. Uh, for those who do not know how to do this, uh, in the right lower corner of this Zoom meeting, you can find an icon in the form of a little globe uh, with underneath the word translation. If you click on it and select English audio, that's perfect and that's fine. And afterwards you can click on mute original audio and now you're good to go and we can listen to the next speaker. Um, so, um, I see a question in uh, Arabic. Um, I would like to remind the people writing down in the chat box, please, um, if, if possible, the, could you rephrase the question in English so that the people who are uh, writing the questions can um, easily um, copy it. Thank you. I will now give the floor to uh, Friyad Fuad Hama from the Kurdistan Relief Association. Um, Friyad, uh, you now have the floor. Thank you very much for your time and please. Hi everyone. First, I would like to say that I'm grateful and honored for being here and I'd like to share my experience and the experience of Iraqi people or Iraqi youth. So my name is Feriat Wat from Kirkuk. I work on a project which is like Youth Speaks or Speak Out. It consists of eight young men and women from different community groups of Kirkuk from different ethnicities and religions. Our program has been implemented by KRA and funded and supported by the Dutch Kurdate organization. The program started at the end of December 2018. It started with the trainings and workshops to build our capacities in collecting stories and then we started with the field work and we collected a large number of stories and after analyzing the stories we diagnosed or identified certain problems that the community faced and then we identified two main or key problems to prior and so we prioritized the problems one is drug drug use and domestic violence or violence against women. And we realized that there are a lot of cases of violence. So as an extension of resolution 1325 issued by the Security Council, we conducted several meetings and initiatives in different places of Kirkuk. And then we became like a focal point between the local and international organizations. However, there was, there was a gap between the community and the decision makers. However, through this program, we were able to overcome this gap or to fill this gap. And we were able to reach the community and the decision makers. And we were kind of able to mitigate or reduce the level of violence. So as I mentioned, we were the, like the linkage between between the community, between the community and the decision makers. And he's saying like, can you hear me? Is my voice clear to you? Um, I'm, I'm telling you, it's all clear. We can hear you. Okay.
Um, excuse me, Friot. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm the only one, but I'm not able to hear your uh, speech. Uh, so I would like to ask the translator. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. You're 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 back on audio. Okay. So Friot, if you maybe could repeat the last sentences, so we can. Yeah, I also can do that. Perfect. Thank you. Through our work in this program, we developed our capacities and our skills, and it was a motivation for us to work in this field. And we had this moral commitment toward uh, the community and to support this community. And it was a motivation also for other young people from different places of Iraq who are interested to adopt such kinds of programs. But because of the lack of support from the international community, international NGOs. So they couldn't find the opportunities for as youth and as women to work in those fields. So that's why we're asking and calling the international community to support youth in a better way. Come on, we hear you. And also I have some recommendations that I would like to share on behalf of the Iraqi youth and Iraqi community. The first one, establish a permanent mechanism and include youth in the decision-making processes, which is very important for us. And this will enhance UN resolutions, which encourage the inclusion of youth in decision-making processes and sustainable investment of youth, which not only, uh, which is not only focusing on livelihood. Yeah, livelihood is very important, but we shouldn't only focus on livelihood. There should be more sustainable programs for youth because the situation in Iraq needs to work for several years on peace and on supporting youth. And also uh, programs for building peace among different uh, community groups from Kirkuk and from Iraq, because as you know, there are different ethnicities and religions and different nationalities in Iraq. So accordingly, it's really important to build the bridges among those communities. And at the end, I would like to thank you all and I would like to apologize for the internet problems. So please accept my apologies and thank you all. Thank you, Friad, and please no apologies. We're very happy to have you here today. And we're very glad that we can have such a diverse representation of voices throughout the entire world. So thank you very much indeed, Friad. Um, I was looking into the chat and I saw that there are some questions. Um, uh, um, I would like to ask the translator, uh, seeing that a couple of questions are in Arabic, um, if he could maybe... But you know, the last comments are not, I don't know if they are questions or not, but they are not written in Arabic. They okay. are using Arabic alphabet, but it's not Arabic language. Okay, thank you very much for uh, yeah. clearing, clearing that out. Um, You're welcome. My Arabic Except language. one of them. Except ah. there's one. <laughs> okay, my Arabic is a little bit rusty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <okay>. um, <laughs> I'll try to. Uh, okay, so if there are any other questions in the chat, but the, but that question was coming from Ahmed Hassan, which is which is about uh, Yemen. That's from oh, okay. the uh, previous presentation. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, if there are any questions for Friad in particular right now, uh, please send them Maktouba in the chat. And Sorry. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, so we can uh, send them to um, Freyad. So if there are any questions, please let, please let us know. We still have time for one or two questions quickly. Um, and otherwise, if you don't have a question right now, no problem at all. Um, oh, so there's a question from Rana for Freyad, but we can do that later on in the Q&A. So that's no problem. If you have any questions for um, Freyad, please also ask them or now or even later on during the Q&A. Um, let me see. I think I, there are a couple of questions 
from uh, there are a couple of people who have their hands raised. Um, could those people maybe write their question down if you have your hand raised? That would be easier for us. Um, and if you don't have a question anymore, please lower your hand, obviously. But if your hand is um, raised, feel free to ask the question, please. We'll give the people who are typing perhaps a second. Um, okay. I would suggest that we do the questions after, and then also we can look at the Google Drive that we are collecting the questions, please. Thank you. That will be uh, that will be perfect. Um, however, there is one question from. Uh, Sarmat Mubarak, which we'll entertain now, and then later on we can do the Q&A. Um, so this question from uh, Sarmad is, are there any, oh, excuse me, from uh, Sabina Asayas, um, I apologize, I mean Sarmad, um, are there any cooperations between Iraqi government and youth initiatives or any support from them? Uh, so Friyad, this question is for you. Uh, can you please repeat it, Mart? Most definitely. The question is from Sarmat Mubarak for Friyad, and the question is, are there, is there any cooperation between Iraqi government and youth initiatives, or is there any support from the government for them? So is this a question to Friyad, or? Indeed, this is a question for, for um, Friyad, yes. Okay. In fact, uh, there's no support from government, except if there is a pressure from international community, especially the Security Council or international community. For, for example, when Kurdish supported us, and when we communicated with decision makers, they were responding. So if we were doing it by ourselves as local community or civil society organizations, we wouldn't be able to receive any support. However, because we were supported by international community or international organizations such as Kurdit, accordingly, we were supported by the government. So this, this is the case. Thank you very much. Um, there's one more question we have time for. Uh, coming from uh, F Therapy, she's from the EU uh, Development Commission, and she asks, uh, "How do they see the youth and CSOs involved in peace processes, and what are their recommendations on that?" Um, so this is a final question for Friad. I mentioned the recommendations to have sustainable mechanisms and the decision-making processes and to have a real role in the peace building process. In addition, we need to have a sustainable investment of youth that doesn't only focus on livelihood or find job opportunities for them. We know that this is crucial for them. However, as a young person from Iraq, we need sustainability. We need to work for several years. But because if the program lasts only for a short period of time, we will, it will not have a serious impact. Because for example, let's say this program is ongoing, but we need, we need probably several years. So five to more years in order to have a real impact on the ground. Okay, hey, thank you very much, uh, Friyad, for your time and your wonderful questions. And also thank you for the uh, translator for your wonderful job um, in helping us coordinating these questions. Um, again, people with very important questions, um, we can do these afterwards in the Q&A. Um, there, um, there is a request for the speakers. 
for the final speaker uh, afterwards, that if they could mention briefly uh, who they see and what they would recommend for the involvement of the youth uh, in regards to the youth uh, civil societies and civil societies in general within the peace processes. So this is a more general question for uh, all of the speakers. Um, we will now go to our final uh, final guest of the of the event, which is Aisha Al Tubuli uh, from Together We Build It in Together We Build It from Libya. Um, I will now give the floor to Aisha. Aisha, thank you very much for your time, and please you have. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we're loud and clear. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Cordade, for organizing this uh, important event. Uh, my name is uh, Aisha. I'm 23 years old. I'm the co-leader coordinator of Together We Build It organization. Uh, proud to say an intergenerational organization working to promote women and youth uh, peace and security in Libya. I started working with uh, Together We Build It since I was uh, 15 years old. And uh, my involvement with Together We Build It and civil society have been uh, really empowering to me. It gave me a practical learning experience through working on women's issues such as gender-based violence and made me see more clearly the extent of inequalities that exist among us. Now, back in uh, 2012, uh, as we were going through major transformations in Libya post uh, uh, the 2011 revolution, I felt intrigued as a young girl to be involved and do something, any, anything really. Um, and that's when I started learning about the importance of women and young people inclusion and peace building. Um, we used to hear new decisions, policies are being made uh, with regards to elections, constitutions, and other important things that will make or break our future, basically as young people or young citizens of Libya. But we've had no space to participate in uh, making those decisions that eventually they will affect us. Not to mention that I felt that as a woman, we were being limited to very stereotypical roles and um, away from leadership. And I couldn't understand uh, why it was like that. Um, from our experience working on peace building and together we build it, we have adapted the intergenerational uh, approach ourselves and together we build it, um, which basically means that um, within the organization we have uh, space to have uh, different um, age groups, uh, young people, young girls, uh, women, um, adult women, and uh, senior women. Uh, we believe that the intergenerational co-leadership uh, approach can advance the peace and security agenda. Co-leadership among different generations for peace and security is needed uh, to ensure everyone's contribution and representation uh, for sustainable peace. Um, as an organization, we started working on uh, uh, the UN Security Council Resolution 1325 and focused on using it as a tool to advocate women's uh, full political participation in formal and informal peace building processes. I realized that if we don't step up ourselves and work on push pushing national decision makers to uphold their international commitments, no one will hand it to us. Uh, women over the years had to fight for uh, their rights. Um, and uh, both resolutions 1325 and 2250 um, take into account the risks and challenges of armed conflict on both uh, women and youth. Um, which is uh, very important for conflict zone areas such as uh, Libya uh, and calls for their full inclusion to establish peace. Um, so it's very, the, the reason we are working or these uh, two resolutions are very important is because they still call upon the full inclusion of women and youth uh, in formal and informal peace processes, even when there's an armed conflict going on. Because we need everyone to work towards peace building. Uh, women peace uh, security agenda have come through a long way in ensuring women's inclusion, but there is so much yet to be done. 
um, I see that women, peace and security and youth peace and security are interlinked because they present us with new unique approach and that's the intergenerational co-leadership. Uh, intergenerational peace building can strengthening, strengthen the implementation of both agendas um, and empower what they both have in common, which is women and young girls. Um, both agendas give us a two-way street and a way to empower both young women and young men and to ensure their agency at the peace table to contribute to peacemaking. Um, it is us young people that will be affected, so we should have a say in what takes place and we should be included in uh, formal and informal peace uh, negotiations. Um, today's world youth uh, generation is the largest ever and uh, youth constitute the majority uh, in the places that are affected um, by armed conflict. So that's why it's very important to include youth because um, they, they can have meaningful insights when it comes to peace building in such circumstances. Um, they only include youth most of the time in the front lines of conflicts, but why not in the front lines uh, of peace building? That's, that's a question that I always keep thinking about. Um, both women and youth are most affected by violence. And so both resolutions 1325 and 2250 formally recognize uh, our role as women and youth peace builders yet our role in peace building remains kind of restricted to informal spaces. Uh, these two resolutions officially demand that we should be included in formal uh, spaces of peace building uh, and peacemaking, and we should be part of uh, the peace talks tables. So now we're reflecting 20 years later and five years later, um, so we need to enhance these tools to ensure more effective implementation and uh, to uphold um, the state's lacking national action plans responsible because without this we are risking peace. Um, we need to be more affirmative and assertive when it comes to implementing these resolutions. Um, Part of the opportunities and challenges that young people face uh, in promoting gender uh, equality in Libya, um, that uh, women and youth face severe security risks and human rights violations. The armed conflict going on for almost a decade now have affected all civilians and their human security. Uh, activists and young people are usually targeted by armed militias when they try to voice their concerns through nonviolent means, such as uh, peaceful protests. Um, just this past August, when a group of youth peacefully protested uh, the situation in Libya, demanding that violence and the political division uh, has to end, uh, some ended up kidnapped and some were forci forcefully uh, arrested. Um, not to mention that protesters were shot at by open fire. Um, not to mention that the deterioration of security um, imposes even more restrictions on women and girls to uh, be able to freely participate in public spaces and to um, um, participate in all kinds of activities. These challenges uh, are very uh, are all alarming and risky. Um, all activists know the price they might pay because of their activism in Libya, but they still try to keep going with the least resources and support. But they choose to do that because youth and women can and want to be part of peace building, and that's why they deserve a place at the table. And this 20th anniversary now, the international community must work together towards establishing more efficient uh, accountability mechanisms against uh, parties that use violence against civilians and peace activists. We have to um, ensure and support the protection of uh, human rights activists and uh, against those who constantly breach the arms embargo on Libya. Uh, all parties or uh, all the uh, people who commit these kinds of violations need to make sure that they will be held accountable for all of this. 
Um, uh, eventually today I would like to uh, conclude with uh, three um, um, from our experience working for nine years now, then together we build it, um, three uh, important um, recommendations. The first one is to support intergenerational uh, peace and security uh, co-leadership where women, peace activists of all ages, young and senior, as well as young men uh, are encouraged to work together on women, peace and security and youth peace and security agenda. We also need to redesign the peace table uh, and call for allocating quotas for youth and women in peace building processes facilitated by the UN or any other member states. Um, and the third one is to establish effective international accountability mechanisms on human rights violations committed against women and youth activists, especially um, in conflict areas. Um, so uh, thank you. Um, I hope uh, everyone heard me clearly and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Aisha. And thank you very much for your very clear recommendations at the end as well. Uh, I think it's a very important uh, aspect indeed that you discussed an, inter an intergenerational um, uh, dimension to this, uh, to the recommendations that you did as well seeing that uh, obviously different groups within different age categories have different opinions, different views, and also different necessities. Uh, so a very good observation indeed. Um, there is a question, due to time constraints, we can only allow one question, unfortunately, for now. Um, and I see that there's one uh, which, is, which is a re recurring question, basically. And uh, we would like to ask you, um, uh, Aisha, if you could mention uh, briefly who you see and who you would recommend um, for the involvement of the youth um, and youth civil societies and other civil societies in general to be um, to be uh, supportive and or contributive in the peace process. I'm sorry, the line dropped uh, in, in a few parts. Can you repeat it? Um, yes, I will repeat it for you. Um, it is a question with regards to um, an earlier question, but also uh, a question that you could uh, maybe answer. Um, it is, could you perhaps mention or briefly mention who you would see and or recognize and you could recommend as a uh, civil society or civil society for concerns on the youth to be um, um, involved in the peace process and, and, and can thus be beneficial for um, allowing a peace process to be uh, beneficial for both parties, uh, which are um, which are party to um, the process. So you basically mean how to be included. Yeah, and like, and, and um, who would you see or who would you like to see to be a part of these uh, of these negotiations? Okay, um, I think, uh, okay, they just resent me the question. Um, um, I think that um, involvement of youth is, is very uh, important and the way it can be perhaps um, ensured or um, emphasized on uh, is basically by opening up uh, platforms uh, where youth can attend and participate and given their feedback to feed in into the policies but it's also that's that's more of like a consultation, but it's also important to keep in mind that we need to have this inclusion also in formal uh, um, spaces. And what I meant in my second recommendation by um, redesigning the peace table is basically instead of creating parallel paths, paths for women and youth uh, to feed into any peace a process or any peace negotiation or peace talks, we need to redesign the table be in a way that it would include them in the main room, on the main table, not in any parallel way. So they can all, like, it's going to be a meaningful way of um, um, them uh, giving their feedback and participating into what's going on. Um, I hope that answers the question. Thank you very much, Aisha, for your wonderful presentation and for answering these questions. 
Um, we also invite you to be part of the Q&A for any further questions from the rest of the participants. But thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Um, we'll not, as of now, we're um, officially out of speakers, um, but we're not uh, done yet. We still have time uh, for questions from the audience. And if people have um, any questions, you could just raise your hand and perhaps um, ask the questions you would like to ask to other speakers who you couldn't uh, do in the beginning. Um, so let's try to do that. And I would like to ask all speakers to um, turn on their webcam so we can um, see all of the speakers and we can direct the question to um, each individual speaker. I see already a question from uh, Lila. And I'll just ask this for the, for all of the speakers who would like to answer this. Uh, the question is, how can we get real international support to activate 1325 in conflict countries like Yemen? Um, if there's anyone who would like to, uh, to like to answer this, I would suppose that Friyal has uh, some pretty interesting insights, perhaps. So Friyal, if you have. Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned, yes, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation that uh, recently the Ministry of Social and Labor with the preparing a national plan in 1325 resolution. Uh, so uh, that's, ha as I said, happened recently and we hope uh, things will uh, uh, go as we hope, inshallah. hope that indeed thank you very much for your uh, question okay um, thank you hard uh, for your answer my apologies and thank you for your question uh lila let me see Ari, um, are there any more questions i think somebody somebody say somebody say can i clarify my question ah. somebody speaking now eh? um i'm not sure if i can hear this individual yeah i i can hear her okay I guess it's Layla. Okay. Uh, um, I would recommend that. Um, probably she didn't pick a language. I don't know. Because she's still trying, I don't know, to communicate. Yeah, please translate. Yeah. I'm trying to communicate with her on both uh, channels, but I can't. Yes. Yes. Activate the thirteen and um, I mean the thirteen twenty-five. That means uh, in reality. That means that uh, all the time we are facing many problems. We are facing threats. We are facing. Uh, I mean, uh, everybody is uh, putting us aside as women and also as youth. So we're not talking only about conferences and um, I mean documents uh, that comes from the government or uh, from. Uh, I mean, any of the parties inside, because uh, uh, as everybody says that uh, in real, um, I mean, in the uh, negotiation, uh, negotiations, uh, there is no women. There are no women, no youth, except the parties. That means that we need real support because we see meetings here and training there, and I mean, whatever. But there are no uh, real, uh, I mean. Uh, representation for uh, women and uh, youth. What we need here is for the international society to, I mean, to give us real support to be in the negotiations. Because even when we work in real ground, but uh, all the time, uh, all our work is uh, they put it in the side. And as I said, that it's only about, uh, com I mean, conferences and uh, training. So uh, this is what I mean exactly. What can the international society? do for us to support us to be in the negotiations not only by conferences especially that all the parties right now
are accepting everyone and I, they are the best. Uh, so for the international society to admit that they are there and they are the best uh, to be uh, to rule Yemen in the um, or to get more benefits in the uh, later. So uh, this is exactly what I meant. If someone Thank can give much. me a real answer, not. Uh, Uh, Laila, to who was this question um, directed, or is it just for anyone in general? Okay. that they did to get this kind of support to be there because yeah. we okay. know that uh, if we are there as women and youth everything will be much much better in uh, bringing back peace yeah. what are the things that uh, we can do uh, or the international society uh, uh, that we need from the international society to bring back, uh, ba uh, I mean, sorry, to activate the 1325, okay? And uh, what is, uh, I mean, it's not, as I said, it's not about th that sometimes, no. they, like what, um, what just my colleagues here said, that it's about, uh, I mean, it's not about conferences, it's not about papers, it's not about that's meetings. That's Yes. Okay, thank you, Lila. I would, I would recommend that uh, one of our panel members will now answer this question. Um, thank you. Friad, do you want to answer this question? Okay. Yes, In that case, I will now give Friad the floor. Thank you, Lila, for your question. Friad, you now have the floor to answer the question. I mentioned earlier that if you want to activate uh, 1325 resolution, we should put more pressure on the government. For example, before ISIS, the government was planning to enhance or activate uh, Resolution 1325, but because of ISIS, uh, things have changed, which made the situation so much worse. And we know that many uh, Yazidi women were sexually enslaved and raped. So ISIS has been defeated, but still there is no real response from the Iraqi government in order to activate or implement or enhance uh, this resolution. So we can see that the government is not willing to do anything for now. Therefore, the international community should put more pressure on, on the government or on the Iraqi government. So UN and international organizations should play a role in this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Friad, and your translator for helping us out. Uh, we have one more final question, and uh, this question will be coming from um, Rana Noman, and this is a question for Friad. Um, and the question is, how can 1325 be implemented effectively and what mechanisms that both men and women follow in place for WPS to achieve the goal? Um, and is there a timeline for this? And are there any strategies implemented in different provinces or changes based upon the circumstances? So uh, how can women be protected from both political and family violence and violations? Um, so... If there's anyone who would like to answer that, uh, Friao, Fri you now have the floor. Is it Friyal or Friyal? Uh, uh, Friyal, you're muted. Yemen. So we cannot hear you. Yes. Another, another right. Uh, I said um, I can say, of course, of the if the women uh, can participate uh, in the negotiation, uh, that will strengthen uh, strengthen uh, their position in the future for 
for uh, political participation. Uh, they will represent uh, another woman and uh, they will extra, uh, extra action uh, of their rights, uh, such as uh, quota. So um, uh, their participation uh, in initiation, I think it's very, very uh, important and will be the first step to get uh, the other rights. Uh, if this is the question that I noticed here in chat. Hello. Oh. Um, I can I hear you, Fiyal. Do you hear, do you hear me, Fiyal? Uh, yes, now, yes. Okay. Um, I think there is a problem with the channels, and I, w I was wondering, in which channel are you currently? Now, is it okay? Do you hear yeah. the, uh, yeah. uh, the question and the answer? Yeah. Go ahead. I think now you... Yeah. You're on the right channel. I said, uh, I, I, I noticed here a question from Rana, I think, which talk, talk that uh, uh, why we are um, asking for the participation in the negoti uh, negotiation table for women. Uh, I think this is, will be a good step if we can do it as uh, many women, because it will be the first step to get uh, another rights and uh, uh, a, a good participation in politic, uh, political uh, uh, life in future. So uh, it's important to participate. If this thank is the question. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Fial. Um, there is one question from Rana to uh, Laila. Um, but Laila was not mem a member of the panel. So I would suggest that um, if you have this question, maybe you could um, uh, send this personal later um, and exchange emails so we can, so you can always discuss this on a later uh, time. I think right now is not the uh, right moment. Um, there is, however, a question I think there's one more question for, let me check. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. We have time left. I think we have time left for one more question. Um, so this is a more general question, I believe for all of our uh, panel members. And we've, we've discussed numerous of good practices, numerous of recommendations, um, but there's still always a sort of um, cross-cultural dimension to a lot of these topics. And the question is, how do you find the perfect balance in respecting uh, cultural differences and um, more? Uh, Sorry, there is one, her name is Hint Katran. She's yes? saying that I asked that question above, uh, so I hope that they can answer it. Ah, okay. Uh, ah, I see the question from Hint. Um, That's then, in Arabic. Uh, Okay, if you could maybe translate this question so we could yeah. write the question out, then we will do that as the final question then, that's no problem. Yeah, and he, he's, uh, or she is, she is saying that we cannot activate uh, the resolution 1325 because the source of legislation is uh, the Islamic Sharia. So I believe that there is no real will to I don't know, to fight or to eliminate violence against women. And also, and also we don't have a kind of like a position, position paper in our dialogues, in our consultation, because without, without it, we will be lost and our efforts would be like, in, will go in vain. So I will recommend that women focus on women quota and they monitor the violence that are committed against them and also work on protecting uh, female or women activists. Because usually like women activists are uh, subjected to violence. And unfortunately we are experiencing marginalization, exclusion, and we are always on the front lines. So we are always expecting to be attacked, to be killed from different religious and security groups because for them, we are not respecting traditions and religions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, 
I think it's a very interesting point indeed. Thank you, Hint, for sharing this with the public. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Rima, could you maybe uh, mute yourself, perhaps? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, the thing is, um, it is not, access, not necessarily a question directed to one of the panel members, more of a statement. Uh, still, thank you very much for the statement. Uh, but I think in order to um, round this um, wonderful side event up, um, we will have a short recap of what we've all discussed today uh, with all of our um, wonderful uh, panel members. So I would like to ask all of our panel members to turn on their um, camera again so we can all see their wonderful faces and um, have a short recap of what has been said today and what kind of recommendations and or um, ideas have um, so have seen the light this afternoon. Uh, and we'll go in a tentative order. So we'll start from uh, Sophia. Um, and it was a very interesting, um, uh, interesting um, presentation. And what Sophia has basically said is that there is support needed internationally right now to make sure that uh, the position of women in Afghanistan will improve and that their voices can be heard. Um, we should not grow tired of, of addressing 1325 or 2020, 2250 when discussing these issues with regards to the position of females uh, when we are uh, speaking with, um, when, when member states are speaking with Afghanistan. Um, and we should des therefore um, actively advocate um, for their position and for their active participation in society as well. I think, Sophia, uh, did I do justice to your uh, presentation? If not, please let me know. <laughs> oh, th thank you so much. Uh, okay. You clearly stated uh, my recommendation. Yes. Okay, so um, thank you, Sophia. Um, when we continue to uh, Ferial and her wonderful points, um, is that uh, in the presentation she gave us, she, so she showed that there um, is a certain interlinkage between the resolutions um, and that uh, current factions do not accept the presence of young people or um, women for that, for that matter um, on the negotiation table due to some cultural ideas and or notions that are um, dominant, so to say. Um, this does, however, not mean that these dominant current views are views that we need to um, accept as, as, as a matter of fact and just let them, let them exist. We should actively try to persuade to um, bring up the idea to get uh, a broader perspective and to create a new um, idea of participation from all members of society, including uh, women and obviously the most vulnerable, uh, the young, younger women who are not um, necessarily um, empowered enough to do so. Um, Rial, I hope I did justice to your presentation as well. You're, yes, you're muted. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and then um, she also did some wonderful recommendations um, to create uh, action plans with regards to Yemen um, that uh, focus um, on supporting youth and women so that we can uh, have a general framework on how to persuade the goals that we've been set out in uh, resolutions such as resolution 1325 and 2250. And I wholeheartedly agree with this um, uh, approach, seeing that a national action plan um, can help the position of all of these actors, in, in this case, uh, young persons and females, um, on a broader scale. Um, and then we went to, um, to the uh, presentation of uh, Friad. And what Friad explained to us uh, was very interesting indeed. I'll just take a sip of my water if you allow me. <coughs> what Friad said was very interesting that uh, he saw that in the aftermath of the horrifying war, uh, a lot of drug use and violence against women uh, became uh, omnipresent, omnipresent and more present in um, the region where he's from. And that in order to combat these things, you need to actually be active with these groups uh, and be on the grounds with them to uh, dis discuss these issues. And therefore, don't be um, afraid of directly confronting um, the local governments and or those who are in charge responsible with what is happening and thus um, making it possible to, my lights are, yes, thank you, <laughs> making it possible to 
um, solve these issues by tackling them heads on first. Um, I think that um, what Friyat said is a very, um, very fresh um, idea of how to tackle these problems without any prejudices and or um, any sense of shame by just showing what is the real status quo. And you can only attack, you can only change the future by addressing the past, uh, addressing the present day situation um, clear, clearly enough. Um, so that is a wonderful, um, a wonderful statement that we got from um, Riyadh. And lastly, um, we have Aisha. Um, and Aisha said that um, the price for activism in uh, Libya is a very high, is, is sometimes a very high um, a high price that some people even pay with their um, with their lives, unfortunately. And uh, we see that this idea of voicing the truth and voicing for a good cause can be very dangerous for these people at the same time. So how can we make sure that we allow them to um, be those activists and be those um, th those those save th those guardians of of the free word and of the good deeds that they are trying to persuade um, by protecting them and work together with them for allowing them to uh, use their voices with through our stages of opportunity for our medium for mediums just through our cooperation. Um, and in, in that sense, it actually all bounds up together very nicely saying that if you want to have this activism and this uh, participation from these people, uh, you need to make sure that they can participate without fearing for their lives, without fearing for the basic needs that they um, need to entertain as well. Um, and I think that's a very inspiring one as well, because sometimes in my own um, little bubble, obviously, in the country where I live in the Netherlands, we see that activism is regarded as a sort of an extracurricular, extracurricular activity and or a hobby. But for other peoples in these countries, especially, it's a way of life and it's a way of making sure that you can live. And we should respect that notion and we should put these things in perspective um, clearly for all of us as participants today. I hope I did justice to your presentation as well, Aisha. If I may add uh, um, something on what I already discussed uh, with regards to the intergenerational If it's briefly, please, yes. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that it's a very important uh, approach to take uh, to empower youth. I'm a live example of this approach. Um, like I said, I started with Together We Build It when I was 15 years old and I had no background about anything. But um, having a platform open for me and having a space open for me uh, empowered me and gave me the opportunity and the tools to know how to build my capacity and to know how to um, basically fight uh, for youth empowerment and women's um, rights as well, being uh, from both categories, a young and a woman at the same time. So I just wanted to uh, stress on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aisha, for this final remark. Uh, and I would like to thank actually all participants as well and all of our wonderful panel members. Um, but most importantly, we'd also like to thank uh, the hosts of this wonderful event and we'd like to thank CSPPS, UNOY and Cordate for uh, hosting this wonderful side event and uh, we would like to all uh, thank you very much for being here present today and um, also thank you very much for being so, um, so, so kindly to listen to each other, to respectfully engage with each other and to make sure that the future um, even though currently uh, not so bright can always become as bright as we would like to have it. Uh, so thank you very much for your time, everyone. Thank you very much for your efforts. And we hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.